Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at refrigeration system design using the Cool Selector 2 app by Danfoss. Now this software is really quick and easy to use, which makes it perfect for HVAC professionals and students. You can really quickly just check the retrofit compatibility of a system. You can compare the performance of the system if you were to replace some of the parts. You can design almost any refrigeration system in there. And there's even some wizards built in, such as the cold room wizard. So just a few clicks of a button and it will come up with all the components that you need for your cold room storage. And once you've done all that, it provides all the design data, the graphs and a very professional looking report. Best of all, this software is absolutely free. So it's well worth a download, just having a play around and test some of your HVAC knowledge. Guys, I'd just like to take a moment to thank Dan Foss, our sponsor for today's episode. Dan Foss is your go-to source for information and resources that can help you through the cooling industry's transition to natural and climate-friendly refrigerants. They have a deep understanding of all the new regulations and their effects, and they're ready to share their knowledge and solutions with you. They've also made helpful tools like the Refrigerant Retrofit Guide, the Low GWP tool, and also the Cool Selector 2 app, which is available for free on their website. You can access them now by visiting refrigerants.danfoss.com. Installation of the software is really quick and easy. Just head over to coolselector.danfoss.com. Scroll down and you see the download link. Let that download and you see it appear down here. And just click it to open it and start the installation. I'm going to do it in English, obviously. Go through, scroll through the terms and conditions. If you accept it, then go forward. Uh, yeah, we'll have the icons created as well. And then done. Now we'll come straight to uh, which country you're in. Units, you can have international, SI, or American. We're gonna stick with international units. And the applications, you can, if you want to, just specify only commercial applications or industrial applications, but I'm gonna stick with all of them. So we'll just continue. And then it will load to a screen like this, where you've got all your different options and components available. Now, right at the very top on this plane here, we've got the file option, and obviously we can uh, load and save and, and open projects or even send them. Uh, we can check the reports of them and also the bill of materials. We go into options, we've also got the preferences. So again, you can change these from commercial, industrial, all applications. Uh, again, you can change the units from SI, international and American or even customs. Go back and change the user and the language and the country uh, from the initial setup and also change the style. Uh, if we go into tools and you can see the, uh, the operating conditions or also the products and refrigerants overview. And then just in the about, we've got a little, a few uh, learning uh, content links there and also the updates. Now there's a few different design options you can select from. Um, the first one being the valves and line components. So this is more if you want to just replace a single component within the system or see how it might perform with a different refrigerant in there, uh, et cetera, et cetera, then this is the option you want here. So you can just go through and select the single component that you want to replace. Um, let's say solenoid valve, so we just click that one. And then the first of all, it's gonna ask you, do you want this to go on the suction line, the discharge line, or the liquid line? We'll select liquid, and then it'll ask you to specify the refrigerant, and I'll just leave that as R134A in this circumstances. Um, then it's gonna ask you about the cooling capacity. You can obviously change all these values, and then it'll ask you the temperature for the evaporation and the condensation, as well as the superheat and the subcooling, so you can change these to um, to suit your parameters and then it's going to ask you do you want to select uh, the components based on pressure drop or the velocity we'll stick with velocity and then it's also going to ask what type of connection would you like to go with this so from that we can then choose a product line and it will then make recommendations um, let's say if we selected these ones and as we go across it's coming up with uh, some warnings and it's telling us that there's going to be flashing in this liquid line so um, these valves are not going to be applicable for our installation. Um, let's go with the EVR version 2. And you can see the ones which are in red are the ones which have a warning against them. Um, again, it's going to have flashing, but these, these uh, options here are the ones which uh, are applicable to our installation. So we can select from uh, a few different options here. And you can see this line here, which is highlighted in green, that is recommending that this product is the best uh, option for your installation, so we'll select that one. And then further down the bottom here, you'll see it also provide the performance curve for this um, this product. And that's got your, your pressure difference on one side and your cooling capacity going along the other axis. Um, and one feature which I thought was really useful in here actually, 
Um, so it gives you your diagrams here for the uh, for the system. Um, but also over here, it's going to give you all the for the, around the entire system some of your design criteria in there. So it's even including the enthalpy and entropy and the density um, as that's moving around the system. So you can see a, a great deal of detail has been included with this uh, this selection software. So the next part we're going to look at is the components in series option. And this will give you all the different systems which you can design through this software. Um, and not just that, it will also let you go and just design the specific line part of, uh, of the system. So uh, if we've got the basic refrigeration cycle here, and it's asking, do you want to design the suction line, the discharge line, or the liquid line? Uh, and we'll just go through with the liquid line. Once it's loaded, it'll ask you which type of refrigerant would you like to use first of all. Uh, we'll leave it as R134A. And then it's going to ask you about the cooling capacities and also the temperatures for your evaporator and condenser, as well as the superheat and the subcooling. And then you can also change from all the different uh, selections and sizes or connections and sizes even. And then over here, you've got the components which you can select from. So as we've got the evaporator and the condenser, then before the evaporator, we're going to want a, a expansion valve. Uh, we've got the electronic over here, the thermostatic or the manual. Um, I'll just go with the thermostatic for this one and let's just say I'll just click this first one the T2 and we'll drag that in but what you'll see is that the results is telling us that uh, the capacity of this valve is going to be too small for our application so uh, we'll just close that one as it's not applicable for what we want so we'll select the thermal expansion valve again and uh, let's just go with the TGE product line and we'll add that in and then straight away you can see that the connections is fine and the results are fine uh, so we can go with this one next we're going to want to add in a filter dryer so we'll come through and you can select all the different product lines here again i'm just going to choose dml and i'll drag that one in there and we can see that the connection is okay and that the result is it is a, uh, applicable to the system we're designing although now you can see the connection is not the same uh, the connection is not suitable for this thermal expansion valve, but that's fine. We'll look at that and correct that towards the end. So we'll also want to add in a sight glass. Uh, let's just select this one here. And I think we'll just go with the SG line. So we'll stick one of these just before the expansion valve. Again, you can see that it's applicable and uh, the connection is good. So then we want to add in uh, some ball valves. So we'll just select uh, stop valves and we'll find the ball valve. So we'll add one of these either side of the filter dryer again you can see that the connection is good and it is applicable to our system and then we'll add in a bit of pipe piping some straight piping so just use copper pipe and we'll add that uh, let's just add that before the filter dryer we'll just move that to this side of the system and then it's given us the option would you like to change the length of the pipe so yes we'll just add in one meter for that one and it's asking about the angle of the pipe, so uh, zero being horizontal and uh, 90 being vertical. And you'll see the icon will change there as well, but um, I'll leave that as zero. Now you can also see that this uh, next valve, and the ball valve has come up and said that this is not applicable, uh, or the connection is not applicable, it can't be used with this one. So we can sort that by just clicking on here, and we'll go through and we'll choose size 10, because that's a size 10. So, and now all the connections are good. To find a connection that will fit between the expansion valve and the uh, sight glass, we're just gonna choose an expander and we'll click and drag that in. And a great feature with the software is that this will actually just automatically size it to uh, for the components. So you can see that this was a 10 and this is a 12 and so it's given us uh, a copper expander which is size 10 to 12. Now down the bottom here, we can just pull this section up and it'll give us uh, performance curves. Uh, it'll also give us the performance details. Again, a feature I really like with this software. Um, and even better than that, it'll also give us the code numbers we need uh, and the product line. So you can take these straight to Danfoss and say, design this system, these are all the components I need. In addition to that, you can also now take this report uh, or this design and put it into a report. Uh, very professional looking and it'll come up and uh, as you go through, and it'll give you all the design criteria that you've specified for your design. And uh, then it will tell you for each of the components as well, including the pressure drop and the velocity, etc. that's going through there. 
absolutely fantastic. Um, we've got all the different components in there. And at the very bottom, we'll also see we've got the performance curve as well. All right, so the next thing we'll look at is commercial applications. And in there, you can see we can do the design for a cold room. So if we click on there, you'll see this pop-up appear. And it's going to ask you, would you like to manually uh, design it or go for a wizard? We'll just go with the wizard. Um, it's going to ask you about the dimensions uh, and the uh, operating conditions for the cold room. So we'll just leave it as default. Again, you can choose which type of goods you've got in there. I'll leave it as mixed uh, and then we'll continue. Uh, it's going to ask you again about the, the temperature and the humidity and the operating hours and the type of insulation that you have. So once you've selected them, go forward and then it's going to come up like this. And they really include a lot of detail in there, so you can still change the dimensions if uh, you haven't got them quite right. And also the operating conditions and the goods you've got in there. Um, then you can go through the infiltration for the air exchange as well as the heat transfer. Um, you can choose uh, you know, the different uh, thicknesses of the insulation and also additional loads. So if you've got some lights in there which can add a bit of heat, etc., you can go through and uh, you know, look at there. You've got, you can even add how many people will be working in there um, or other if you know what the watts are going to be. So you can add all those in there and we'll just uh, go forward. You can select the uh, where in the world this is going to be, I'll leave it as Europe, and uh, then you can choose from the different types of systems that you've got there and also the different refrigerants that you're going to be using. So we'll leave it as default and just continue. Then it's going to ask you about some of the components in there. Um, we'll just leave it as that is and select that. And when it loads, it'll come up and it'll have done all the work for you so you know which condensing unit to use, which controllers you'll need to use, uh, you, you know the pipe work, the different valves, the expansion valves, and the distributor you've got there, and also the pipe work which you need. So um, this has done all the legwork for you. It's just very quick and easy, and uh, you've got the whole system planned for you. Again, from there you can go straight into the report, and we can just scroll through, and it'll come up with uh, all the design design criteria which we've just looked at, and uh, and the pressure drops, etc., that you're going to be facing with there. So the next part we'll look at is the industrial applications and in here you can see we've got the evaporator valve station. So we'll just select that and it'll come up with uh, this pop up here. So then you see we've come up with uh, the valve selection box here and we've got all the different lines which are coming in. Um, and you've got a few options here for which type of connection you would like. I'll tell it to include pipes and uh, we'll leave everything else as standard. And as we go through, it's then going to ask you what is the distance between uh, the evaporator and the box. And we'll leave it as three meters. Then it's going to come up with some more design data here. So you can obviously choose the refrigerant which you're going to be using in the system. And uh, you can change the cooling capacities and the temperatures. Um, so I'll just leave that all as it is. And that will then load. And inside you've got all the design criteria uh, that you need. So these are all the components it would have selected for you to, to meet the uh, design criteria that you need. And then you can just quick and easily click on report and it will generate this professional looking report for you. And uh, this contains your diagrams as well as all the components and the design criteria that you've included in there. Uh, and you can that's ready to then go into your site pack or off to, the, uh, to Demfos to purchase the components that you need. And the last section we'll look at is the compressor and condenser unit section. And so you can just select uh, a, an individual compressor or condenser unit for your system. Um, we'll just go a look, uh, go in and have a look at the compressor section. So when it loads, you'll see all this information that's come up here. And you can choose what sort of system you would like. So uh, let's go for just refrigeration. So we'll deselect heating mode. Then we'll choose which type of refrigerant we're going to be using. Um, and we'll select just, uh, let's go with 410A. Uh, and then you can choose the power supply. So I'm in the UK, I'm gonna use 50 Hertz. If you're in the US, etc., then you'll use 60. Um, then we'll look and we'll leave uh, both reciprocating and scroll in there, uh, fixed speed or variable speed. And cooling capacity we'll leave as it is, as well as the evaporator and condensers and the uh, superheat and subcooling that come with them. And then as we go through this list here, we can see the uh, the percent match that we've got here. So these two here are the most ideal ones and uh, it's recommending, you can see this one highlighted in green that this would be uh, for the des design criteria that I've put in, this will be the most applicable and suitable for the needs. So we'll stick with that one. And uh, as we lift this up, 
you can see we've got uh, the performance curves here, the working envelope, the performance details, and uh, some more information on the, the selection. Uh, and if we go to the performance, you can go and see that we've got all the different charts. So we've got the cooling capacity, uh, depending on the evaporating temperature and the cooling capacity. And we've got the power consumption um, based on the evaporating temperature, the heating capacity, the amount of currents it's going to use, the coefficient of performance, and the mass flow rate, which it can provide depending, again, on the evaporating temperature. And again, now that you've selected this and uh, we're happy with using this in our system, we can just head over to reports and it automatically generates a nice little report page in there telling us uh, which, you know, which compressor we've used and some of the design criteria that goes with that. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and it helped you. Just before we go, I'd like to say one more quick thanks to Danfoss for sponsoring this episode and remind you to check out their free refrigerant resources available at refrigerants.danfoss.com.